caller to the show. <laughs> Don't, I don't really like the look of this guy, to be honest. I don't know. If, I don't think we should bring him on. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? Well, well, it's, it's, it's your party. It's, it's his party <laughs> as well, sir. <laughs> He's the boss, sir. <laughs> Let's bring him on. Go on, go on. I feel, I feel nice Get today. me on, mate. Get me on. <laughs> Sam, now, how you ordering doing? Sammy. How are we doing? How are we doing? You all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all day, good. It? Got the win there. Got the win in the end. Um, it's all like classic Tottenham. You always have to make it a little bit scary for ourselves, but... Um, good win. Yeah, it was a good win. And, it, and we needed it, didn't we, after that Liverpool result earlier today when they lost. It was important for us to to respond in the manner that we did respond. And what, what did you make out of the performance as a whole? Because we in the studio here just were so comfortable. Yeah, and I think we were comfortable um, throughout most of the game, apart from maybe the last like 20 minutes where we did seem to lose our way a bit. Um, I think, to be honest, I, I, I've said this before, I do think it's, again, um, it's quite similar to a lot of performances that we have seen from us, except the difference was, you know, the, like, for example, the difference between today and the Wolves game is that we scored in the, in the first half. The Wolves, we didn't score. And, mm. and if, if we would have taken the lead against Wolves, it would have been a very different game. We did take charge, thankfully, in this one. Richarlison, he just can't get the luck, can he? But unfortunately, his goal was ruled out. I thought that was a bit of a pathetic decision, but it is what it is. But um, obviously, uh, Kane gives us the lead with a brilliant assist by Porro. Uh, we get the penalty deservedly after good work from Richarlison. It put us in, in the ascendancy. It put us in control. Forrest had absolutely nothing for that first half. And then in the second half, I, to be honest... Second half, I didn't like our performance that much. I didn't think we were we were as good as we were in the first half. We mm. we kind of it seemed as though we just set up to kind of contain Forest in the second half rather than actually just try and score more goals. We did um, happen to get one through Son, which um, I wouldn't say was against run of play, but we, it kind of came out the blue a bit. We didn't really look like scoring like that third goal when it did go in. So, like we we obviously got we got the third goal, and then. And then I don't know. We conceded. We were um, forced out, made a couple of saves, and we and then we conceded that penalty, um, which could have made it three two. So I don't I don't quite like how we ended the game, to be honest. But I think overall, it was it was really good to get back to winning ways. I thought it was a good response to uh, midweek in terms of just getting back, um, getting those three points, getting back uh, to uh, the top four putting us back in the top four race, like in the ascendancy there, where it looked like we were maybe losing our grip on top four after Liverpool beating United 7-0. We've now, you know, we've put ourselves in a really good position now. But I just think performance-wise, I I, I, I'm not saying it was bad. I just think it's very similar to what we've seen. I don't think it was like a massive change. Yeah, yeah I kind of agree. I mean, it was kind of first 45 minutes, we were so dominant. And then second half, they made a few changes and, and got themselves back in the game somewhat. But I still felt like even in that second half, um, we didn't come under too much pressure. Um, and I still felt we were the better team um, overall by by some way. Um, after the Yeah, the war... but it's classic Tottenham. We, we can only play f like we can... Yeah. Um, second half, we were okay, but still only 45 minutes where we were really good. And that's yeah. still a constant problem. Yeah, I, still, I still think that was a problem today. No, it's very true. It's very true. And, you know, everyone was kind of surprised that Richarlison got named in the starting lineup today mm -hmm. after the, the war of words between Richarlison and Conte uh, pre-match. How do you think he did today? Do you think he responded in the right manner? Yeah, playing on the right-hand side as well. And is you know, what we've said is his least favourite position. I thought he put in a really good performance. I thought it was a constant menace down that right-hand side. What I really liked about him, which I don't think we've seen enough of um, in a Spurs shirt, is his willingness to run in behind, stretch mm -hmm. the, the uh, Forest defence. And um, I thought he did a really good job with that uh, today. Obviously, he um, he won the penalty doing that. Um, I think he's tended to like the ball to feet and like to dribble at players. But today, he was constantly going in behind Lodi. Um, I think Romero and Skip and Hoybe were constantly playing um, passes in behind to him. And that was really, really positive. I thought he was linking up really well with Porro. Obviously, got two assists on the day. One, for, well, I guess if you count the penalties and assists, and a really good cross for Sonny's... Um, Sonny's goal as well, really good cross. Um, and I thought he looked really creative and it was a good response. And I think maybe um, that's just one way of Conte putting to bed that whole war of words. You start in the next game, he has a good game um, and that's it. Obviously, he just can't buy a goal, can he? Um, mm. he is so unlucky. He's scored two goals now and they've both been ruled out, haven't they, for offside? I couldn't see um, that offside today. Yeah, I, I, we generally were sitting here yeah, and just couldn't, I couldn't see it. it. 
I can. I've seen the lines again. I don't see it. I, I also. I've seen an image with both lines touching, and I thought if both lines are touching, then the advantage goes to the attacker under the new rules. But whatever, apparently, uh, who knows the rules? It doesn't know, count. It will change tomorrow what, now. Uh, having to top them. Yeah, it's so early. annoying as well because it was it was a brilliant goal. It was a really yeah, great finish from Richarlison. If he would, if that would have counted, you know, I would have given him so much confidence. But I'm happy that he didn't let that affect him, and he still went on to have a really good game. And I thought he linked up really well with Kane and Son. And, um, I thought that's just one way to put that whole saga to bed hopefully. Because um, mm. I think if he would have not started again, and maybe if he would have come on for like 10 minutes again, the whole thing rumbles on. But yeah, I think I think it was a good, play, a good management by Conte. Just nip it in the bud straight away. Start him the next game. And he has a good game. Yeah, absolutely. And has your opinions changed on uh, Conte at all after that performance, after that win? I mean, we've been kind of like in acceptance that maybe Conte does need to go now um, if he's not going to sign that contract. What are you thinking now? Any Any changes of thought? I don't think it's changed because I don't think Conte, unless Conte's positions change, I, I haven't changed. As I've said, I've, I even said this after Milan. I don't think he's doing a terrible job at Tottenham. Um, I think he's, I do think he's a good manager, um, and, and and I do think if he was um, to commit long term, I'm more than happy to keep him. But if he's not going to stay, there's no point in keeping him. I don't see if, he, if uh, I don't see the point in keeping him. He's off next season. I guess you could argue. Um, uh, he can just get top four and then and then we can both go our separate ways. I guess you could argue that. But for me, um, I, I, I guess I would argue we're probably wasting time uh, if he's not staying here. Whereas a new manager can bed in, get to know the squad more and in time for next season. But then again, what I would say is I wouldn't just sack him willy-nilly without having a plan. Um, course, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I, I don't I, like. I, some people say, "Get him out now! Get him out! I want to see him out tomorrow!" And all this guy's like, because Poch is waiting no in point. the wings. Poch has no, got no it's job like, yeah, there. So it's like... But if Poch isn't the guy, I don't see yeah. the point of just sacking him um, just for the sake of sacking him. I don't see the point in that. But um, if there is a guy that we have in mind who's ready to come now, um, then yeah, I think um, make the change because I think um, we have to start planning for next season 100%. But look, if Conte, if Conte does get us top four this season, whatever people want to say about him, he can look back on his Tottenham tenure with a um, positively, in my opinion. I know he, I know he'll probably be a bit annoyed, very annoyed that you know he hasn't really seriously challenged for any trophies. But taking us to two top four, top four finishes, which is our, which is the best we, um, finishes we've had. Uh, would have been the best finish to have since Pochettino. I think he could be proud of that. And, um, and especially after a couple of years where uh, we, were fin we finished sixth and seventh in a bit of disarray, I think he can definitely um, say he steadied the ship and he he, he would have done a good job. Um, so, I don't, no, I don't think my my feelings have changed after today, Conte. I don't think anything's changed. Well, uh, what look, about, we, it's, for, it's Forrest at home. Yeah, and Forrest were really poor today, especially in that first half, yeah. let's be honest. Um, but what about his comments that he was making in those in that embargo section yesterday? I mean, he was saying that he wants time and patience. The club will give him time and patience, but he doesn't think the fans have time and patience. Um, I mean, from those comments, to me, it sounded like he wants to stay. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I do think those, that it was interesting. Uh, maybe he's talking about... Um, um, I think he's talking about patience of winning trophies and stuff, and I think he's absolutely on the money, to be honest. I, d I do think the fan base have lost patience, rightly or wrongly. You could argue that we've been patient for 15 years to win a trophy and or 20 years to win a trophy, and you know we've we've completely run out of patience. But I think he's absolutely right when he says that the fan base have completely run out of patience. He doesn't help himself when he rests, um, when he doesn't play his um, first team in Sheffield United and we just chuck away the cup um, so easily like we did. Although what I would argue is he's not, he won't be the first manager um, or first elite manager to rest players in a cup competition. He won't be the last. But um, I would say he took it. I think he took that cup way too lightly and that was a really good opportunity to win something. But I do agree that um, there is a kind of angst among the fan base at the moment. And every time a, an opportunity of winning a trophy, um, uh, we, every time we lose one, it's a whole crisis and a disaster. And it's a, it's a massive deal because we haven't won something in so long. And It's also the banner um, that we're going out these competitions in, isn't it? Exactly. And that's absolutely right. And even though... You know, we're in a top four race and we're in a good position in the top four. And in years gone by, we would have been fairly content with that. Now it's 
either we win a trophy or we're not happy. And that's led to this situation where, like, we, we're, we, we see it as a crisis every time we go out of a cup competition or every time we go out of these trophies. And that has led to a lot of impatience. And I can understand um, Conte's frustration with that um, because maybe because if you look at our, you know, he. If you look at our backline and stuff like that, are we, is that is that uh, ready to win a trophy? Probably not. So I, I do understand his frustration, but then again, a, a lot of fans would argue that we have that it's we have the right to be impatient because we've been patient for long enough. So it's a difficult yeah. balancing act. I get I get that, and I get what you say. Maybe the backline, the players that we do have, a lot of them are not ready to win trophies. But when you look at the competitions that we've gone out with and who we're going out to and when you're looking at the teams left in the competition as well, it just leaves a massive bitter taste in your mouth, doesn't it? Of course it does. But Conte, I'm sure when um, Conte and Levy sat down um, when they and they hash out the priorities, it was probably uh, top four Champions League, FA Cup and League Cup. Mm. And... Uh, I, 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 and you know, we sign players like Richarlison and, and whatnot, so we could give Kane a rest, and we give Kane a rest in the cup game, and we end up going out because we didn't have the team on the pitch um, that was good enough to go through. I would have personally prioritised the FA Cup game rather than rather than the league game against Wolves. But we're, we're, when we're in a top four race, that's what Conte is employed for. He's employed to get top four. If Conte gets top four, then he's done his job. If he gets, if he wins the FA Cup and finishes outside the top four, then he hasn't done his job, and that's unfortunately the reality of the situation. So there's a misalignment, I think, between the aims of the club and and what the fan base are really craving for right now, and it's a, and, and that leads to a lot of frustration. But I understand his comments on um, on on the fans because I, I think whatever you want to say, whatever you want to say, uh, like whether whether he says it affects the players and all that kind of stuff, I don't know where I stand on that. But when he says the fans are impatient, I think that's absolutely right. I don't think anyone yeah. can disagree with that. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, I, I agree pretty much word for word everything Conte said in that embargo. But it's interesting what he said today in his press conference. He said that um, he was talking about the top four race and he said for Tottenham, getting in the top four is like winning the Premier League. Oh, That's God. what he said for us oh, this season. God. And that, that just goes to show the mindset of the club right now. That yeah. goes to show the mindset, and Absolutely. you got to remember. Look, we haven't won for we haven't won, um, and we look we haven't won a league for sixty years. Okay, we haven't won. We've we haven't won a European Cup since the eighties. We haven't won an FA Cup since ninety one. So for, for for us, um, I understand like we've got a rich history of in a rich history of winning trophies like a long time ago, but like. We have, we, there's no, we, we, why should we go into every season expecting trophies? Like, we shouldn't until we build no. that solid foundation. I don't, no, I, I agree. We shouldn't be going into it expecting trophies. But, but when we you do. see, but when you see the teams that we go out to, it's just a kick in the teeth, isn't it? I think yeah, it's more expe 100%. expecting to compete. Yeah. We expect mm -hmm. to compete and get to the latter, latter stages of these things, especially the way the FA Cup was drawn. And it's like you said, the manner of the way it happens. Mm. But look, let's let's get back on the game uh, in terms of a few personnel that I want to I want to talk to you about. Pedro Porro, first of all, I thought he's he's growing, growing, growing. Involved mm. in all three goals today. Um, I mean, what a play he's uh, he's coming on. Yeah, I mean, look at that cross for Kane's goal. Has Emerson ever put a cross in like that in his whole Tottenham career? I don't no, think never. he's ever put one in <laughs> in his life. I don't. Th I don't think I've seen one. And it's taken. Yeah, Poro, but has Pedro like, Porro ever done a no-look pass? <laughs> <laughs> Just you wait. He did a shush. He did a hand to the mouth like that. I haven't seen Emerson do that. Um, Porro was. I was really encouraged by Porro today. I have to say, I was really encouraged by him. Um, I think even when. His crosses um, are pretend, are not re not necessarily um, hitting the target. They're always looking dangerous. They have that whip on them um, that that causes problems. And he yeah. put in a few today. I, I don't know if I, I I would like to see the stats, but he put in a few today, which um, uh, which w w which were really really dangerous. Like a, some really good crosses today. And I thought one thing that I think he could have done a bit more was take on his man. There's a couple of occasions where he had a lot of space to run into, and he decided um, to kind of check back and 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 not. Um, um, go not really dribble and take on a man but I thought um his build-up play his crossing um 
I, I was really happy with him. I thought his link-up play of Richarlison was good. It's good really he's good. growing in this team as well. He's getting that. Um, I saw the celebration with Sonny. They have they've got a celebration together now, so he's getting integrated into the team. Um, I think this guy has got a big future at Tottenham. I'm I'm really excited about him, and um, hopefully he's got those. Um, five dribble Go attempts. On. Five five dribble attempts. Two successful. Six crosses. One successful. Six crosses. One successful. Okay. Um, okay. Fair enough. Um, but, I, but as I say, even when the, the crosses like Emerson, like when he does a cross which isn't successful, like it's never dangerous. Whereas you see mm. with Porro, he ha you can, they're, they're, they're dangerous even if they're not a successful cross. They're like they're either near, near the target or they got a lot of whip in them, a lot of pace on them. Um, and he's an exciting player exciting play and that was a great assist for Kane you he have to was. say and um I, I, I was really happy with him really happy with him who's your man in the match today um I think probably one of the midfielders I think Hoybier was brilliant I thought yeah, Hoybier had a brilliant both game yeah. both of them were sensational yeah Hoybier and Skip played really well um I think Hoybier was probably the one in the second half who kept kept up his standards whereas a lot of the players dropped off a lot I thought Hoybier was um, really mm. strong. Um, so I'll probably give it to him. But um, I think uh, Kane deserves mention, Richarlison. Yeah, I thought I thought there was a lot of really good perform performers there. But where, again, why are we not giving Dan Juba any minutes? I just don't understand it. I do I not mean, understand it. I mean, Conte it. said it, didn't he? Conte said it in his in his pre-match press conference. He's not a winger. He's I mean, he's not a number 10. He's either an out-and-out -out winger or a second striker, and we don't play with them. So why the hell did we sign mm. him? Beats me. In probably again, it look, 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 when 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 you're beating Everton, uh, ever when you when you when Everton have signed him and you're and you're jumping in uh, to 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 jump the queue on him when he's already basically signed for another club. That doesn't tell me that that was planned out. You know, that doesn't tell me this is a player that we'd always wanted and Conte had asked for and that we'd 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 finally got our man. This tells me that we just sniffed an opportunity and we we jumped at the chance. And mm. it seems as though we're we're getting more and more information that uh, a lot of these signings um weren't made with Conte's system in mind and just made because they were opportunities. And that's what I think Spence was definitely there. We're hearing that Richarlison um, was an opportunity because we felt like we could um, do a deal with Everton um, for him because they're in financial trouble. Um, now we're hearing about Dan Juma as well. So I think there's a lot of lot of these signings now that it's, uh, it seems to be coming out that, um, that these, are, these are signings that we're making because the club feel like they could sign them and not whether they should sign them. Mm. And that's a big problem. And look, and, and when, when you think about it, like, is like, it, when, in terms of like a number ten, Dan Juma is not really number ten. Neither is Richarlison. Uh, they're not. They're not. Um, but but then again, apparently Conte didn't want Madison, and he definitely is a number ten. He would have definitely fit the system. So um, I like that. then. So then again, you know, you you can't have it all. But um, I, I, you know, you do, do, it makes Can we sense. Something? Like Richard, <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I don't know what he. I don't know what Conte wants in that in that sense. But. It's definitely coming out more and more. These are more club signings and ones that Conte specifically wanted to fit the system. Yeah, absolutely. Spot on.